Well, Karen, thank you so much. I want to welcome you to the Organized Preneur Show. This is a podcast where I help um, uh, entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs particularly, uh, get organized but add a little bit more infrastructure to their businesses uh, and their lives. I help them to declutter. But um, it's primarily, you know, help you to just kind of, you know, clear some of the fog, you know, and uh, just um, so that you have more clarity because that's that's the goal of, um, or should I say, it's the goal, but it's also a big, sometimes a big issue for a lot of us entrepreneurs in the online space, because there's a lot of noise there out there. Is, there <laughs> is, as you were saying that, I was thinking about if you're a new entrepreneur, oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming, all the different things you could be listening to and reading and following. Yes. And, and you know, a lot of us want to bootstrap a little bit to get going and, and wow, is there a lot? Yeah. Of options. So I love that there's people like you around to help us, uh, people with avoid our, some shiny object syndrome and stay focused. You know what? I'm in for it. So, yeah, me, <laughs> me too. so yeah. So by way of introduction, so I'm going, I will, I'll give a little bit of your bio, but I also want you to share a little bit, you know, a little bit some personal things, you know, so we'll just kind of move right into the podcast. So for those who may be, you know, for the first time uh, being introduced to you, Karen, um, I'm going to share a little bit of your uh, bio and then I'll um, have you to share a little bit if that's okay. Sure. So um, Karen is the C CEO of Up Level Media. She offers results oriented and expert conversational marketing strategies that positions her clients to bring in instant results. She comes with a background that includes over 20 years. I love that. That means you're a veteran. Yeah, <laughs> I probably years. can update that to 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Um, and uh, over 20 years in the field of information technology, marketing, and customer relations, making social media her, her, okay, if I can get this right, making social media her ideal niche. <laughs> did I get that right, you Karen? You did. You <laughs> did. So, Karen, I want to welcome you to the show. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, so for the sake of the listeners who don't know you, of course, like I said, you know, this was, you know, your bio, but I'd love for you to go ahead and introduce yourself and share a little bit more about who you are, who you serve, you know, thing, all of that kind of stuff that people want to know. Yeah. So, you know, my background started off in sales and marketing in the tech world. And, you know, back in, oh, let's just go with the 90s and the 2000s, I um, was often the only woman in the room. And I didn't realize the skills that that was teaching me, how if I didn't learn how to shine a light on my accomplishments or frankly learn how to open my mouth, I never would have been able to have any success at all. So, so what I, when I came, when I shifted gears and I started running and mostly everything I've done has always been in sales and marketing. So when I shifted my business um, and the work that I've been doing to online marketing, I realized that that was a skill that was, that not a lot of people had. So even though I was helping people with their marketing in general, I was driving people back to LinkedIn because I was like, no, people need to know more about you. You need to tell people how great you are. You need to let people know that you're worthy of being in the room, that you are worthy of the conversation, you know, and that you're worthy of their investment, not just of their money, but even their time to even talk to you about if you're worthy of their money. Right. So. Mm -hmm. So eventually learning more and more as I learned about online marketing, I realized that, you know, niching really was a, a, an important way to move forward. So and, and eventually I was asked to speak all over the place on LinkedIn strategies. And then I realized even more so how um, women didn't really feel included in these strategies. They mm -hmm. felt, you know, so it's not like I my business, my work excludes men, but I want women to feel included in the conversations around building a strong, powerful network and you know, showing up confidently with a brand that positions you as an expert, as if you're peers with the most influential people in your industry. And frankly, I, you know, I like to call it flipping the funnel, right? Like, you know, when you first go into entrepreneurism, 
we hear a lot about, especially all that noise you talked about, right? Like, well, but the guy down the street charges this much for a yoga class and I need to charge this much. I'm like, nah, what can you, what can you sell that you can charge $10,000 for or $5,000 for Right. And, and because we are coming to this, many of the people I talk to are coming to this place with so much expertise. Mm -hmm. We have to have the confidence to lean back on that and to create a business that serves us abundantly. And when we are doing those things, the people we're serving are overserved because we've got the budget and what we're doing to really be able to weigh over deliver to them. And that's how we start to build wealth. So I started to niche my business down more and more on supporting women with these strategies. Um, you know, I, formally, I guess I support women with LinkedIn and PR marketing strategies, but ultimately I want there to be more wealthy women in the world. And it comes down to learning how to establish credibility, build actual real connection have actual conversations and that's where the conversions happen. Right. So, so I, you know, and I think that all that noise you talked about earlier, I think that got even worse during the pandemic and, and the, the strategies that I was taught 10 years ago and maybe are still out there being taught to people are just not working anymore. It's yeah. just too noisy. I used to get clients from social media. People used to see tweets and then reach out to me and say, Hey, Karen. And, you know, and then, and I can think of a couple of clients that paid me, you know, many thousands of dollars over the years to work with them that found me on a tweet or a LinkedIn post. That's not really happening anymore. Now it comes mm -hmm. down. It's more mar marketing is more intimate and more personal. So that's why I love um, getting really clear on where your big opportunities are and staying so massively focused on that, um, making some real money. And then we can start playing with some of the other stuff. Yeah. You know, I love so much of everything that you have said. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You love that. From, <laughs> from the part about, you know, um, when you were saying that, you know, you, you love, you love working with women, but not, you're not excluding men, but you you prefer, you know, working. I same thing here. Yeah, I just want women to feel more included. And yeah. I don't think they're feeling as included as I want them to feel yeah. with some of these higher ticket strategies. The people that are teaching it are a lot, there's a lot of bro marketing going on out there. And I'm not knocking that stuff because it works, right. but it doesn't always work for us. Right. right. So so right. I, I know that there's a more feminine way to do this and yeah. it's not a hard sales approach. It's just having actual conversations yeah. with the right people. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's a great segue, Karen, because you talk about conversational marketing in, in using social media to have conversations, you know, with your customers and yeah. increase sales and things like that. So tell me a little bit more about this conversational marketing thing. I don't think I've yeah. ever heard that term, but I know it's necessary and we, yeah. it's, it's, you know, for us to kind of, you know, just get through the noise, yeah, you know, yeah. like, we, like we've been saying. So talk a little bit more about that conversation. Well, I mean, let's just design. use LinkedIn, for example. I know yeah. many people listening are probably going, oh my gosh, I get so much spam there. People are just connecting with me and connecting with me and then they want to sell me stuff. And I get that. I, I, I like to call that the weeds. LinkedIn can be your money tree. Don't, don't not water your money tree because of the weeds, right? <laughs> Pull the weeds. Don't ignore right. them. Right. So, so that doesn't work. I mean, it might work. It might put people on your calendar, but they're not the right people. It's a complete waste of your time. You're going to yeah. be spinning your wheels and you're going to exhaust yourself. Yeah. I would much rather you take some time and, you know, as you're building relationships on LinkedIn, I like, there's three categories. I like to see build relationships in first, let's not overlook who might buy from you. Right. So, but that's not where I want to focus. I want to focus on the other two categories. And that is who else has an audience of people that is similar to the audience you have um, and building relationships with them because now those conversations are not, here's what I do. Give me your credit card there. Here's what I do. Who do you know? Right. And that's a beautiful way. And, and, and that's a really collaborative way to build your business. And then the third category is who are the journalists that write about what you do and are you building relationships with them? Actual relationships. Right. So, so from there, you know, and it's not times a hundred a week or a month, it's times like five a week, you know, but if you're really intentional and craft a strategy and do research and have, you know, five calls a week on your calendar with people you've connected with on LinkedIn across those three categories, but heavy on the second two, um, you're going to see magic happen. But, wow. but where it gets 
where it gets, you know, where the strategy comes in. And this is why I, I really want women to hear what I'm saying right now. It's we're often very good at that conversation, right? Yeah. Like, true. okay, we met in this group and we're out oh, this Facebook group or we met in this networking event. Let's have coffee. And then we say, okay, if I think of anybody, I'm totally going to send them your way. I mean, mm. does that ever happen? <laughs> no, it never happens. Right. <laughs> right. I want you to take that next little step and take and make that an have like an action item and say, mm. okay, let's make a plan, right? What can we do? How can I get my your name in my front of my audience? And tell me how I can serve your audience with my stuff and actually create a plan for that. Thinking bigger, thinking like a CEO, thinking like you know, a multi six or seven figure business owner, not somebody that just wants to get another client. Mm -hmm. And that is the piece. That's the tricky piece to conversational marketing. You want to have these conversations, but you want to remember that you run a business yeah. and that you, you can't serve until your cup is overflowing, right? Mm -hmm. Or you best serve when your cup is overflowing, when you're serving from that overflow, right? So, so that's what that conversational marketing is. It's about doing some research. They're almost never has to be called outreach. I can promise you, if you put anybody in front of me, we can have a 30 minute conversation and they'll leave with a hundred warm people they can do outreach to. You know, we know people across so many areas of our lives and, and they're targeted, right? Not randomly. And, and, and then just do that. And, you know, somebody, somebody, uh, talked one time about the strategies that I teach and said, they said that what they love about the strategies that I teach is that they're, they, I make, I, I ask them to be consistent, but I also let them be lazy. Like, You're lazy, <laughs> but consistent. I'm like, that's it. That's exactly it. Cause we're busy. Nobody wants to connect yeah. with a hundred people a week. Right. Right. So I don't really think that any of us are lazy specifically, but, but the consistent piece yeah. is important and having people on the call on your calendar, but having a real intention for how is this call on my calendar going to serve me and serve my business? Yeah. And, and that's the kinds of conversations I want people to be having. Yeah. I love that because it really is in so many words, it's like, you know, the difference between transactional conversations mm -hmm. uh, versus, you know, conversational marketing or relationship, you know, right. building relationships. And so I think it's so important because, you know, we, you know, we keep talking about, you know, the noise and mm -hmm. the shiny objects and everything like that, you know, but when you build a relationship, you know, with people, um, then, you know, they remember you, you remember them. Exactly. And it, yeah. And exactly. it, it, it minimizes this, um, Compet competitive thing, you know, yes. like, it, yes. because here's the, here's the thing. And I, I know I can tell you, you would agree to this, but it's, there really is no competition because <gasps> even if we did the same thing, Yes. You know, somebody's going to resonate doing, with you. Somebody's yeah. going to resonate with me. And I don't want people that don't resonate with me. Exactly. Exactly. And so, um, now, you know, I, I can't remember, exactly how you said it, but do you think that we as women may feel the pressure to be, um, you know, well, it, well, it's more like this, uh, this, you know, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, imposter syndrome, all of that kind oh of gosh, stuff. Yes. Do you think we feel that more than men? Yes. You know? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. I can tell you, I read a book one time and I was like, yes, yes, yes. This is the thing. And the book, I, I can't even remember who it was, but you started the book out by saying, I was sitting in a room and there's a man in the front of the room and he starts spouting off this nonsense <laughs> that didn't make any sense. And she's like, what? This man makes like several hundred thousand dollars a year. And he was up there talking about this. Like it was the gospel. You know, she's like, no woman can, would do that. Like right. we, like there's studies that show that, if there's a job opening and there's 10 requirements for the job opening, a man will apply if he has three, a woman needs 11 before she'll apply. Like we, so, so, and the important thing to understand about imposter syndrome is it's okay to have, like we all have it. It's mm -hmm. not, it's, it's okay to have it, but we need to recognize it. Mm -hmm. And we need to know that at every new level, there's going to be more imposter syndrome, right? So a lot of the women that I work with are maybe changing careers, right? Maybe they were in corporate and they're moving into an entrepreneurism and 
they've never been an entrepreneur before. How could they know how to be this person? Yeah. Right. So, so it's okay to do identity work and to do mindset work. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, if I have two people and somebody just dives all in on the strategy, but refuses the mindset work and the other person does all goes all in on the mindset work and kind of half asses the strategy, the second person that does the mindset work is going to have the success faster. I can give you strategy all day long, but if you don't feel you're worthy of it, you're just never going to get there. So it's okay, to, but we have to recognize it. Mm -hmm. And then we have to do some work around it. And that's okay. As long as we know that, that, and, and, you know, when you go from a hundred, a hundred dollar business owner to a thousand dollar business owner to a million dollar business owner, mm -hmm. every step there's new, there's new levels of imposter syndrome. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't have said that any better. I mean, it's it's like, and I tell people, you know, that, um, you know, it's particularly new, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, they have all these fears around, you know, certain things and, and things like that. And I said, you know what? It's probably not going to go away. <laughs> You know, because it's just like what you're saying, you know, each time you reach another level, there's going to be another level of, you know, uh, there's going to be another level of stress. There's going to be another, yeah. another level. And then if you're really comfortable where you are, I don't know, are you really achieving what you want to achieve? You know, like, I feel like, you know, we've heard all these crazy things. The magic happens outside of your comfort zone. Right. So. Yeah. I, you know, and, and even when we write, like one of the services we offer is we write LinkedIn profiles. And so often I say to women, like if, if, if it's doesn't make you a little queasy to hit save, then we haven't talked enough about how brilliant you are, wow. you know, because it's like, okay, you know, and I've had women that we've written profiles for who are like these amazing women whose names you'd recognize, you know, top 10 women who, who like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm bragging. I'm like, no, no, you, you did all this stuff. You're owning this. You're not bragging. Yeah. You're owning it. You know, yeah. so it, it's just, it's part of who we are and it's okay. Yeah. We just have to recognize it and, um, and understand yeah. that there's so much out there for us if we if we are willing to to think bigger. Yeah, yeah. You know, as you were saying that, I thought, you know, why is it that we struggle so much with, you know, we call it bragging, you know, about ourselves. Uh, you know, why is it that we struggle so much with that when we, you know, we do a lot. <laughs> I know. I know. And we don't value the things that we're really good at too. Yeah. You know, like, you know, if you make like the best eggplant Parmesan in the world, girl, sell that stuff. Exactly. You know what I mean? Don't think yeah. I have just because you know how to do it. doesn't mean like that's your skill. Do yeah. it. You know? yeah. So we don't value the skills that we have. Yeah. Yeah. So in your, uh, so one of the things as I was, you know, reading, you said that uh, this, this type of conversational marketing brings out instant instant results. What does that mean? So, yeah, yeah. talk a little you know, bit about that. People buy from people. You can post to you know till the cows come home and and pray and cross your fingers and hope somebody's going to buy it. Yeah. But when you are talking to people, when you have a process that gets conversations on your calendar every single week, like you brush your teeth, like you water your plants, you know the 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 magic happens fast yeah you know so so the instant results come from you know if you want a i'll give you an example there's mm -hmm. a let's say you're a woman and you're you know if you're by the way if you're a woman and you're listening to this and your goal is to make a couple bucks so that you can you know pay for a cleaning person that's cool that's mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. i'm not knocking that at all but if you have an ambition to run, you know, to bring a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars into your household every week, then then to have those kinds of incident results, you have to think bigger. Mm. And what I mean by that is, and you can have the instant results by mm. thinking bigger. There's a there's a there was a a networking group that I went to a couple of months ago and it was in person. And I, I used to live in this area and I just recently moved back here. So I said, Oh, let me go to this women's networking group. And mm -hmm. they, they went around the room and asked all the women, how can we support you? What can we do? And every woman, like if they sold pens, they said, well, I make this pen. I sell great pens. If you know anybody that wants to buy a pen, let me know. Mm -hmm. Every single person said some version of that. And when it came to me, I was like, here's what I do. I want the next time I sit in this room for every single woman to tell me, here's what I do. I sell pens. Who do you know that has a stationary store that needs 10,000 of them? 
right? Like I'm not asking you to do something different, sell pens if that's what you want to do, but think bigger, yeah. look for those bigger opportunities because that is where the wealth comes in, not the one pen at a time. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the piece that I think a lot of women overlook. And that's the, that's where the instant results happen. You mm -hmm. know, I have a student in one of my programs that just yesterday, I think said to me, she was creating um, like a VIP package and mm -hmm. she had somebody that wanted information on it. And she said, I heard your voice in my head as I was talking to him. <laughs> she goes, and I heard your voice and you were like, add a zero and then shut up. You know, she goes, so I did, I added a zero and then I went silent and he said, okay. I'm in, where do I sign? Right. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. We don't value what we do enough because here's the thing. I don't want her to overcharge people. Right. But now she has the budget to massively over deliver to this client. Mm. She can bring in other resources, right? She can really provide a huge value because she's brought in enough budget. And so often we say, well, it's going to take about five hours of my time. And I think I want $50 an hour. So I think I better, you know, like, no, that's not how you right. get well, build wealth. That, and again, if you're looking to just bring a couple hundred bucks in and, and you want to sell dollars for hours, that's okay. Right. If you want wealth, we have to think differently. Yeah. Yeah. That is so good. So good. So I know you also um, do, you know, help your clients with PR strategies. Tell me a little bit more about that. And what are some strat some, yeah. some of those strategies that yeah. you offer? Oh, you know, it's so interesting. It's it's my one of my favorite things that I do because, you know, as we're building relationships and and looking for those higher ticket opportunities, right? If you're taking your pen and you want to go to a distributor, you need to look credible, right? Mm -hmm. You need to look worthy of their time. So PR helps us do that. Mm -hmm. And journalists, there are more journalists than there are entrepreneurs. There are more, they are in need of sources every day. There are more podcasts then then there are podcast guests right so yeah. so what i want is for when people throw you their your name into a search bar 10 pages to come up and i don't you know it doesn't really matter what happens it's about the credibility mm -hmm. pr gives you credibility and it's and there's two different kinds of pr there's probably more than two but the generally there's 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 um paid and earned media, right? Paid media, okay. earned media. There is nothing wrong with paid media. There is nothing wrong with paying Forbes magazine $10,000 for a feature. People do it all the time. Mm -hmm. But mo most of us don't have that money as we're mm -hmm. building our credibility, right? So mm -hmm. earned media is who finding out who writes about what you do and then mm -hmm. building relationships with them, having those conversations. You know, I have a client who's a real estate agent and, um, she was on the West Coast and she um, applied these strategies. She had a great LinkedIn profile. So she looked worthy of their time, right? She had done that piece mm -hmm. and just connect, just saw an article written by a journalist about real estate. And she connected with the journalist, which is the piece most people forget, connected on, with, on LinkedIn with the journalist, but then shared the post across her social, tagged the journalist everywhere, and then said to the journalist, this was such a great article. I you may have noticed I tagged you across social. Thanks for writing this. It, you know, I, I, you know, I hope whatever. And journalists, believe me, you have a podcast. I have a podcast. We don't wake up every morning with those kinds of messages in our inbox, right? So, right. so when it happens, we remember. So a week later, the same journalist reached back out to my client and said, you know, I'm writing another article. Can I ask you a couple questions? And she said, mm -hmm. sure. Turned into a full page article on NBCnews.com, seen by 85 million people. And, you know, listen, did 85 million people call her? Absolutely not. But what happens now is she's got that credibility. Mm -hmm. She can use as seen on NBC. She can show that article. And when there's a there's a house that's being listed in her area and there's competition for the listing, when she drops on the table, well, when I was NBC News as housing price specialist in October, she doesn't lose a listing, right? Because right. she's got that credibility. So the publicity does that. And it was as simple as what I just said. Right. Great LinkedIn profile. Shared a, shared a post and, you know, a week later they are, they, they featured her. It can be that simple wow. and it should be that simple, but we have to have a strategy. Again, it's part of that consistent, but lazy, right? You've got to build that in to what you do. So when you're, so that's how this all fits together, right? This like con con connection, credibility, conversation thing. If you're building connections and you have and you've got dust bunnies on your LinkedIn profile or people can't check when they check you out, you don't check out, you're losing the opportunity. So the PR 
helps you build credibility so you stop losing those opportunities and you can you can you feel credible to get those bigger opportunities and frankly it helps with that imposter syndrome too when you're getting new, interviewed in newspapers and magazines mm, wow yeah that's true that is true um I, I i guess i never thought about it you know that way so like because even when I saw that you do, you know, PR, I was thinking, okay, because because I know you said there's a lot of, you know, different kinds of PR, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, and we know that that's public, uh, public relations. Right. And so uh, there's, you know, the PR that helps people to, you know, clean up their mess. <laughs> right. Right. Yes, 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 yes. Have you ever, have you <laughs> ever done anything like that? Or that's no, not I am not a PR or? expert. Right. I'm a relationship <laughs> expert, relationship yeah. building, business relationship building expert. Let's get really clear on that. Um, do not come to me for your personal relationships. That is definitely not my strength. <laughs> um, but but it's part of that relationship building yeah. and, and building relationships with journalists so that they call you when there's an article happening. If you have something happening in your town, you can call them up and say, Hey, you might want to come to this. And then they cover it. Right. Those are the kinds of things like there are people like us, listen, it's likely not going to be Oprah, but it might be, who knows, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. the only way to do it is to, you know, they need us. And mm -hmm. the people that are, I'm sure, I am sure everyone listening had, can experience sometime in their life where they saw somebody on the television that was looked like they were 12 years old, talking like an expert about what they're expert in going, what? How mm -hmm. is it this? I know so much more than this person that's there. How are they sitting on that TV? Yeah. Right? We've all, they, they didn't come knocking on their door. Right. right. They went and looked for it. So mm -hmm. all I'm saying is let's go and look. Let's have a let's have a process that you're consistently doing some outreach around publicity, around being guests on podcasts, around being speaking opportunities and things like that, because it builds your credibility and helps helps it just make it because because when you know so many women are worried about like selling mm -hmm. you don't have to sell as much right. when you come to that place with the credibility and you know and and the conversation it's not a sale anymore it's just right. hey here's what i do you know you've seen a lot of the places that i've been interviewed you've seen the credibility i have i'm, I'm here to help you if you want some help right 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 so when a so so give me so when a person comes to you what is like their biggest problem? Like, you know, they, they, okay, I'm, I'm looking for someone to do what, or sometimes they don't even know. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's yeah. probably Well, you know, here's the thing. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest problems is one of the things that you saw, which is they just all over the place. Yeah. And they think they need to be doing all the things. And to be honest, if you, if you're looking to, to scale your business with ads and low ticket offers, I'm not your person. I'm not saying that doesn't right. work. That's just right. not what I do. Right. What I do is help, you know, if you're, if you're in a new chapter, if you're stepping into a new chapter, if your business is fairly new or you, or you've realized that all the people out there that tell you you should have a six figure business are crazy because a six figure business after you pay all your expenses is not enough money. Right. So, so, you know, you've now realized, okay, I'm done on the hamster wheel. I need to, I need to go, I need to go to a quarter million dollars this year. Right. Mm -hmm. When you realize that the first that's, that's where I want you, mm -hmm. because the first thing you need to do then is work on your credibility, your, um, you know, your personal brand and have higher ticket offers. And, mm -hmm. and again, it's not about overcharging. It's mm -hmm. about, you know, who wants to buy 10,000 of my pens, mm -hmm. right? Like understanding what that offer is and then reverse engineering a process mm -hmm. to get those, the people on your calendar that can lead to those closed sales. God. And it is, and if you do just that, mm. right? When don't sing, don't post a single time on Instagram. Don't dance on TikTok. You just oh do that. <laughs> you will have a quarter million dollar in your business. Yeah, you know, but we get caught up in all the things we sh think we should be doing. I'm not saying don't do all those things. Right. I do all those things. I don't dance yeah. on TikTok, but I yeah. do a lot of things. But at the end of the day, what I want you to do is make enough money that you can pay people to do that stuff. Yeah. And you stay in your lane, stay yeah. in your zone of genius. You don't need, I mean, think about like, like the value ladders that people offer, right? The like mm -hmm. $2 thing and an $8 thing and a 12. Do you know how many sales pages you have to create? And thank you pages <laughs> right. and payment pages you have to create for that? Like who? I don't. I don't have time. I don't right, do that. Right, right. Right. Like you know what? Sell something for ten thousand dollars. Sell it tomorrow and hire somebody. Take two thousand of that. Right. Put it in an account and pay somebody. 
pay somebody a thousand dollars a month for two months and then sell another one of those ten thousand dollar things. Yeah. And once you know how to do that, you can self fund your business. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. So, so what's like one thing that, and I know because we've talked about a whole lot of things, right? And so, like if you were to give someone like one thing, you know, one takeaway, you know, from this conversation, what's the one thing that they could do today okay. yep. that can just, you <clears throat> so know. So go to Staples and buy those big giant sticky notes and stick it on your wall and mm -hmm. put on the top of it, I'm going to say $10,000 and then create something that you can offer for $10,000 that you know in your heart of hearts is worth $100,000. Mm. Just wow. think bigger. Think wow. bigger. Wow. And that right there is going to make a difference. There isn't there are very few men in the world that are going out there worried about selling a pen. Yeah. Right. They want, yeah. they're going out there looking for the bigger deals. We have to think bigger. Mm. So just dream it up. Maybe yeah. it's a, an in-person, like I, I did this with a friend of mine who's a yoga teacher. And um, I said, you know, there's people that are busy. You're a yeah. yoga teacher. You sell, you sell classes for $7 a class. And I'm telling you, put a $10,000 offer on the table, right? Like that's a pretty big jump, right? But mm -hmm. like, you know what? Maybe you're going to spend a day with me. I'm busy and I'm not 20 anymore. So I have aches and pains and I can only do certain yoga poses. Help <laughs> me create a couple of different yoga poses. Help me create maybe some meditations that go with it. Um, maybe some essential oils. Like let's spend a really juicy, amazing day together. Pay for a massage for me somewhere in that day. Um, and then follow up maybe every week, do a one-on-one -on -one thing with me via Zoom or something. I'm busy. I'm not coming to your class. And you know what the reality is? I come to your class and I can't do half of it because I'm not 20 anymore, right? So create an offer like that, right? And that, you know, and, and there are women who are in your community that are busy CEOs, successful women who will do that mm -hmm. for three months. You're going to work with them intensively for this $10,000 mm -hmm. to really help them have an established yoga practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, so mm -hmm. that's what I mean. That's yeah. kind of what I mean by that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, so the big, the, the takeaway for today, listeners, even those who are watching, if you're watching is to, Go to Staples, or I'm, I'm not trying to push Staples. Oh, yeah, whoever, yeah. Wherever, wherever you buy it, yeah, where, wherever, yeah. you buy your, Walmart, wherever you whatever. buy your giant post-it notes. Go to your your post-it. <laughs> go buy post-it notes, giant post-it notes, a, a giant post-it note. Put on there an offer. And if you right. if it needs to be five thousand, I can live with that. You can you can live with that. I can live with that because sometimes people have to they have to kind of start somewhere, you know. They do, but you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. So many coaches come to me and they say, well, I have this three month package and it's three, it's a thousand dollars a month for three months. And they think that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's great. What if, what if you front loaded it with an intensive and it's just an option? Yeah. You know, we can work for three months together or for, and that's $3,000 or for $5,000, we can kick it off with a half day together yeah. and we're going to accomplish in one half day, what it normally takes us a month and a half to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And we're going to jump in way ahead. People will pay for that. We want fast results. So there's a lot of ways to do this mm -hmm. that that are is giving your people what they want. We are the ones in the way of, yeah. <laughs> of giving these to you know, they're yeah. willing to pay us for these yeah. things. Yeah. We just have to, we just have to, you know, dream them up. By the way, this is one of my very favorite things to do. So hit me up on LinkedIn if you want to do this, if you need help with this. Mm -hmm. Um you know, it's just to get, you know, just to dream bigger. And, mm. and, and then you, you know, it's so nice when, and, and listen, part of this is all, we all have imposter syndrome. I remember yeah. I had a salesperson working for me one time and she called me up and she's like, I need a sales page for $18,000. I'm like, really? What am, what am I giving them? Am I giving them a child? Do you know what I mean? Like, what am I giving them? <laughs> right. But at the end of the day, it was amazing to have a budget that I could on the fly bring in my PR expert. I mm. could on the I could. It was like instead of going, oh my gosh, I can't believe I don't have any more money for this client. I can't do this. Yeah. Now I was like so I so over delivered to her, you know. And it was such a lesson to me, you know, um, when when uh, we did this, and this was like ten years ago, right? Like so, so there are people you need to be completely confident in your ability to deliver. Mm 
Yeah. Right. And I, and I bet you are, if you're in your wheelhouse, mm-hmm. you know, and you, yeah. you know, listen, I can't promise results because I don't know what you're going to do. Right. Right. So, exactly. <laughs> so you're not promising results. You're just promising that you're going to, you're going to work with them to the best of your ability on some kind of transformation. Right. And then dream up things, yeah. pick yeah. them up in a limo, set yeah. them flowers. I don't yeah. know, you know? Yeah. Oh, I love that. And and you said the key word there was, you know, transformation. Yeah. You know, because uh, that's what people are looking for. They they want, you know, that trans tra- the, um that transformation, yeah. you know. So um but yeah, so I know you have a podcast. Let's talk about your podcast. So you. Yeah. So my podcast is called Good Girls Get Rich. Ah, and I love it. it it really, you know, the 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 um the meaning behind that really is when you do what you're good at, like stay in your lane, do what you're good at. Yeah. And that's where the abundance comes into your life. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, it gets put, published every Monday. And um, in fact, this week, well, the week of recording this, um, we did an episode just on solely on how amazing it is when women support women. There's this a phenomenon happening on threads, which is a new social media platform where it's just, it's been going on for like two months now, where it's just women supporting women, women supporting women. And it's, we are so hungry for this. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, that's what I stand for. Like I said, I wanted to be more wealthy women in the world. And when we support each other, that's where this happens. So that's what my show is about. It's about, mm-hmm. you know, some of its strategy and tactics. Yeah. A lot of it is mindset. We do have some guests too. So, you know, it's, um, it's my gift to my audience every week. Yeah, like yeah. this is for yours, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I love that. Now, you mentioned threads. You know, I tried threads, and I was like, ah. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I'm yeah. not necessarily buying into threads totally yet. Yeah. But this women supporting women phenomenon yeah. is blowing my mind. Every yeah. single time I log into threads, it's still going on. Wow. In fact, like if I was a guy, I'd probably have left threads by now. Yeah. <laughs> because it's unless it's just what I'm seeing, because that's what right. I do. Yeah. But it is it's so amazing. It's yeah. so it's like women are hungry for this. Yeah. Like we're hungry for this. Yeah. You know, yeah. so let's do it. Let's take yeah. care of each other. Yeah. Let's help each other. Absolutely. So what's next for you? Oh boy. Um, you know, we're making some changes to some of the work we do, um, in the new year. Um, I, I, what I'm going to be doing in, um, we're going to be adding on a, um, an addition to the podcast this year. I'm not sure exactly. I don't know if it's going to replace the podcast, but we're doing a little bit of rebranding. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, we're going to be doing, a, I'm going to be doing a live weekly interview series as well. And okay. that's going to be live on <clears throat> across all my social media platforms. So, yeah. I'm yeah. excited about that. And to, to be honest, I, you know, I don't have a lot of new things coming. I, 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 I say in my own lane, right? yeah. so we've got some new branding coming up and just, a, just, just diving deeper into what we're all already doing. Yeah. Um, and, and incorporating, seeing how we can incorporate more done for you services into the work we do. Cause mm-hmm. the women we work with are busy and we want to help them as much as we can. So, yeah. so that's what's happening. More done for you. Um, we're not going to be an agency, but we're going to do more done for you work this year. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. So do you have something uh, like, you know, a program like right now, something I you do. wanted to offer? Cause that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> so, you know, I only work with people two ways. And again, simplify, right. Yes. <clears throat> and whether we work together privately or, or you're in my program, the work is exactly the same, you know, and and we talked a little bit about it here, right? I just Mm -hmm. take you through that process, but Mm -hmm. our 12-week program is designed, and again, we're building more done for you into it this year, so um, it's a really good time to get in on it. Mm -hmm. It's called the She's Linked Up Accelerator Program, and it's very hands-on. It's, it's, we write your LinkedIn profile for you. We help, we, we give you weekly accountability calls to move you through this, because like I said, we can't guarantee you results, but we can do is, is everything we can do to help you get results. And our mm-hmm. the first thing that happens with everyone is that they get a call with me to do that dream up your big offer thing because mm-hmm. I love doing that. And then um, and then we put a process in place to reverse engineer your system so that you land those kinds of contracts. Yeah. And by the end of the 12 weeks, we want everybody landing those contracts. So yeah. <clears throat> we're now running them in cohorts, which is kind of new to us. Um, but I love that because it allows us, there was a woman that um, just joined recently and she was a little concerned about having the time to do the homework. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, now that we're running cohorts, 
we can do a lot of homeworky type things mm -hmm. on the weekly group calls yeah. because everybody's in the same place. Where before, when everybody was started at a different time, we couldn't do that as much. Right. So it's I've got a beautiful, amazing team of people that I work with that, um, and honestly, the clients I work with. The when women. <sighs> Are given the opportunity to do these kinds of things yeah. it is magic yeah. it is magic yeah. when they claim it and then they own it and then they just start doing it like yeah. i said one of my clients was just like i added a zero because you said to it and they yeah. said yes <laughs> you know um yeah you know it's it's I, I have another client who joined um she actually was previously in the program and she joined some like we have some stuff on the back end we offer and mm -hmm. she came to me and she's like I'm, i want you know, I want six figure business contracts. And I'm like, all right, she's never done one. I go, all right, we'll get it done. <laughs> and she's been doing it for like two, like, I think she's in like six weeks in and she's, she's landed a $48,000 contract this week. So nice. like they're doing it when yeah. they claim it and they have a system and the support, not just yeah. of me, but of the other people in the cohorts, the other people around them. Like when these women are together, yeah, oh my gosh. magic happens. Unbelievable what can happen. Yeah, yeah, that is so cool. Now you said the name of it pretty fast, so I didn't get it. What the was the name of it? It's called the She's Linked Up Accelerator Program. She's Linked Up. Yeah, Accelerator. and I will say that we only bring people in by invitation because I am pretty committed to only serving people that I know we can help. Right. Um. So <clears throat> we have a um a quiz. If you go to LinkedInQuiz.com. It'll give you a sense of what your marketing style. And because a lot of the work we do is very right brain, left brain, even the quiz incorporates that. Like one of the things we do in the quiz is we identify what your crystal is. This is actually my crystal. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, you know, we incorporate some left brain, right brain. There's some morning meditations in there, like morning visualizations in there based mm -hmm. on your marketing style. To, mm -hmm. And then also, of course, there's the tactical stuff, right? right. The tactical right. Um, based on your style, do more of this and less of that. But one of the things you'll get as you go through the quiz is a link to an opportunity to book a call with me. And we can then at that point, we just see if it's a fit to work together to be able to support you. Um, and, and it's not that if we, we don't think it's a fit that we don't want to support you, right. I will give you do these few things and let's talk again in three months. Absolutely. You know, I'm not abandoning anybody. Right. But I, right. I, you know, I, if we invite you to the program, it's because I see at least a quarter million dollars a year business in your, in your immediate future. And I don't want that to scare anyone because right. like I said, you know, if you sell pens and you're like, yeah. I just need to sell another $2 pen. Well, if we're selling 10,000 of them, you know, we can right. get pretty close to that number if we get one yeah. new distributor a month. Right. So right. Um, don't, don't let it scare you. Yeah. Let just be, you know, be open and let's chat and see yeah. what we can yeah. conjure up. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, I am, am super excited to have had you as my guest today. I mean, we covered, we covered a lot. We did. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And and that's that's what I like and 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 I love experiencing your conversational style. <laughs> yeah, and this is it. This is what we yeah. do. You know, this yeah. is this is what I teach you how to do. Yeah, and, and we know how to do this, right? Yeah. You've got these people in your network already. We just need to kind of. I like to call it like we give you like plug and play. We're just yeah. gonna pull you in, throw you in a phone booth, and when you come out, you're gonna have the full system. You're gonna look amazing, and it's all gonna you know work for you mm -hmm. now you said phone booth now some people <laughs> <laughs> oh I yeah now you know how old i am <laughs> i can relate to what you're talking about but there may be some that's listening that may be all right like, so well, what what's that? a phone like, booth I gotta, like, what's a, a phone portal? book in a portal how do i yeah i have to, I have to think about what the new version of that is right you i don't go into know a, uh, i yeah, don't I'll have know. to ask my kids yeah, you know, it's, it's just kids. real funny, you know, some of the things that, <laughs> you know, like, like, like I was saying, a phone book, people are like, you know, I know right. people are like, what is that? Right. You know, so. <laughs> But yeah, so I, I just thought that was really funny. So, That's so funny. but yeah, so um, uh, those who are listening, all of the information, her contact and uh, Karen's contact information, all of that is going to be in the show notes. Uh, I want you to reach out to her. And she's an amazing woman. She has some amazing things going on. And so I'm super excited to have had her on the show. Karen, thank you so much for oh, coming. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Please let me know if you connect with me on LinkedIn. This is where we 
we it, it, were introduced to each other. Yes. Um, and definitely take that quiz. Just get started with that. See where it goes. Yeah. See what you think. Yeah. We, you know, we don't just tell you what you should be doing. We tell you things like, you know, maybe don't do as much of this. Yeah. <laughs> so and, it's, and, a, it's a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm glad you said that because that's the thing that a lot of people are tired of. Yeah. You and know? no spam ever. And no cold calling ever. No need. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Karen. I so appreciate you. And oh, uh, I you look so forward for to, me. yeah, I look forward to, you know, seeing you out there in cyberspace, cyberspace. Is it cyberspace? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, <laughs> I gotta, maybe I'll look you up if I get to Dallas. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I uh, definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here with me on the Organized Preneur Show. And uh, we're definitely uh, want you to come back and uh, share more of your wisdom, uh, particularly like next year, you know, see what's Always. going on. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. I'm happy yeah. to come back. Yeah. So uh, definitely appreciate you for uh, being here uh, on the show. So um, 